guys. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to our NOMA Reset program for this evening. For those of you that I don't know, my name is Gabrielle Weirich and I'm the Deputy Director for Learning and Engagement here at NOMA. Um, I'm actually coming to you from my home office. <laughs> um, for those of you that are new to NOMA Reset, I think a few of you have participated in previous iterations, but it is our ongoing series that um, utilizes mindfulness, creativity, reflection, uh, and we always try to do it in conjunction with a community partner. So I'm really excited about tonight's program. And if you enjoy tonight, I hope you continue to uh, participate in NOMA Reset programs. So for tonight's program specifically, we are focusing on ENSO painting, uh, and that is in conjunction with the exhibition that's currently on view in Noma's galleries, Buddha and Shiva, Lotus and Dragon. Uh, I hope that you will have a chance to come and see the exhibition in person, and if not, to access all of the virtual content online we have uh, about the exhibition. But tonight we are joined um, by the amazing Rose Bratcher, who is an accomplished Enso painter and also the um, resident monk at the New Orleans Zen Temple. Uh, just a, a couple of logistics things before I turn the floor or the screen over to Rose, I should say. Um, for archival purposes, we are recording this program, so I just want everyone to be aware of that. Uh, if you have any questions, you should enter it into the chat function here. We purposely are running this at, in a meeting format as opposed to a webinar format so that we can have more opportunity to engage. Um, in terms of time frame, we will end promptly at 7.15 and I have uh, volunteered myself to be the, the timekeeper and the person who wraps it up. So I will try to keep us on time there at the end. And um, just a, another quick reminder that because this is the meeting format, um, if you could go ahead and just make sure to keep yourself on mute unless you are speaking to the group or in conversation um, with other participants as part of the program. So I think without further ado, I'm going to turn the, the screen over to Rose. So Rose, take it away. Thank you, Gabby. Hello. How is everyone doing? I can see you, it's fine. <laughs> so tonight we're gonna to talk about the ENSO and the extension of Zen that it is. There are so many aspects to Zen culture or Zen practice. Zen is a way of life, a philosophy. Some people practice it religiously. Some people practice it as a religion, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a practice the same way that yoga is a practice. In fact, we do one yogic posture. We sit in either lotus or half lotus or something close to it, or sometimes half lily, depend on, on what you can do. The most important thing is getting your spine straight. The connection of that straight spine translates into the practice of drawing the insole by your straight pen. This is your paintbrush, your pen. This becomes your proverbial spy, yes? Let's talk about how it originated. We use sumi ink, Japanese ink. It is a style of painting originating from the calligraphy and the, those wonderful decorative scrolls that we, we see consistently. Noma has a, a de delightful, delightful exhibit of them. If you haven't seen them, make sure that you do. We say in Zazen that we know where you are and what's going on with you by your posture, by what's going on with the way you sit. We can do the same thing with your insole. The insole is a circle. It's empty, right? It's vast. The same way that Zen is vast. They, they say that the way of Zen is this vast empty space. 
the ritual, the ceremony is empty, but it's also full. It can be as magnanimous as the completion of the cosmos when the, the circle is full. It could be as simple as showing um, the idea of the moon or a humble cookie or the top of your teacup that must be empty before you can be prepared for, for your, your journey or the lesson as it were. It's a simple thing, just as it is simple, but it's in such simplicity that you can find some very deep and intricate truths about yourself. You can practice the Enso every day and it, and it will be different. The same way that if you practice Zen every day, it will be different because you are different. It is a new you. Each moment is unique and you can capture that using your pen. You can do it like a diary. You know, there are those who practice it every day. I have gone long periods where I'll practice it every day and see how, how, how close to perfect I get or see what's going on with my mind that day or the phone rings and there's a great big, a, a great big emptiness within the emptiness. Okay, so you miss the page sometimes and that's fine too. It's perfect. Traditionally, the practice is said that you focus very carefully It is about concentration. Gabrielle mentioned mindfulness. Now, not all Buddhist practice focus on mindfulness in the way that we understand it or discuss it popularly now, because it's very, very common to hear things about mindfulness or practicing mindfully. I, I, I want a different word because in Zazen, we, we seek to allow the mind to empty the same way as the end soul is empty. We allow our mind and body to unite. We are, allow the mind to empty and cool down in order to act with our whole being. Automatically, naturally, unconsciously. Act with your whole being. So when you draw an insult, when you pick up your pen, you look very carefully at your brush. You enjoy this brush. It can take on the uh, character of mindfulness by watching your emotions. That is the main difference between some Zazen practice, what we do, focus concentration, and mindfulness as it is practiced by others. The witnessing of the emotion, that is the only difference. Otherwise, you're just sitting, simply sitting. We use the term shikantaza, which means simply sitting. Because all you do when you sit, is sit the same way that when you decide to draw the ensel, all you do is draw the ensel. You are only painting the ensel. Everything else drops away. It doesn't matter if the dog is barking, the cat is meowing, the chickens are fighting, it's irrelevant. Nothing exists but you and your brush. You have to consider what kind of ink you want to use at that moment. You can use a one of those wonderful old, old style grinding ink sticks, which are really wonderful and lovely for authenticity, but it'll take you a, a very long time to get a wonderful dark quality. But perhaps you don't want that. Perhaps you want to have something wistful. And you consider these things as you practice. You consider these things as you choose your paper. It is attention, concentration to detail that gives us that um, quality or 
experience that people say is Zen-like. We try not to use that term so much. I also like the words, words like enlightenment. We, we, we don't get involved with that because all there is is here and now. The practice is here and now. And practicing the insult will prepare you to do that. I think I will start with the water bowl. Now, when you begin to do any type of uh, Japanese calligraphy or painting, sumi or the, uh, even the very large styles of zendo, which is where you get these big um, mop sized brushes and you do something really fantastic. It is best to start with something simple like a water board, like a, uh, this one in particular is called the Buddha board. You can find these at uh, the Noma uh, gift shop or you can uh, start off with things like newspaper or, um, or um, what's the brown, uh, that wonderful brown parchment paper. When you are actually doing drawing of the insole on rice paper, you want to wait until you're really comfortable with your brush and your ink. Right now I'm going to use water just so that we get the idea and the motion of using this experience. Now, the insult also has spiritual implications for some. We don't always concentrate on terms of spirit in the way that we use it in Western experience. Terms like Shen mean spirit, but not in the way that we use them here. So we use a spirit to focus our energies. The spiritual implications of this circle, which could be, interestingly enough, the way I place this, uh, halo-ish, <laughs> or an afro, or a cookie, or the moon, could contain the entire universe or nothing at all. And it's important to remember that juxtaposition. You find yourself wandering in mind and body often, especially in these times that can be most distracting. This practice can help you focus. In order to do a comfortable, proper insult, you concentrate on your seating, make sure that you're your, your distance is exactly comfortable for you. You hold the brush straight up and down, which is also traditional in uh, calligraphy, Japanese calligraphy. And then you drop the brush. It is the moment, it's instantaneous. But you don't have to rush to be absolutely focused, your concentration completely rooted to the moment. Don't escape the moment. Don't think of anything else. All that is at this moment is the brush, whatever you're using to paint, the water at this time, and your paper. You straighten your spine, gather yourself in the same way that we walk breath by breath, you drop the brush and you go. The nice thing about using a Buddha board, it helps you to see the ephemeral. It helps you to feel this moment. You can see, I, I can tell you that my mind wandered here because as I was uh, circling the brush, I saw the flash of someone else showing up and thank you for showing up, I appreciate you. It is live and real and present. 
the idea of all Zen practices is to bring you to the very moment all the time, to live all the way to the edge of your skin, to always be present in this moment. It, it sounds very easy. We think we are in our moment, but that is not true. We spend a lot of time in the past and in the future. To be perfectly honest, all of these things are the past. The only thing that happened that was present was when I dropped the brush and made this insult. But now that too is the past. Everything we wear, everything we do, everything we have, everything we have eaten, enjoyed, and brought with us is the past. The future is what we're concerned with. Like how long is she really gonna talk? Is she actually going to stop and, and, and let us do things? Is she going to check with us to see how we are? Will there be a break? You know, I really want a cookie. This is the future. This is what our minds do. We try to escape the very moment. Because being in our bodies is very uncomfortable. And it's okay to be uncomfortable. But we forget that. Taking the paper paying attention to the moment, being very aware of every single bit of this now, only this now. You can notice that if there is the sound of a motorcycle, but you should not follow it because thoughts are like clouds. You shouldn't push them away, but you also shouldn't follow them. Painting the insult is a fantastic tool to help you focus your energy into the space between the past and the future. You can be very careful about your materials. This is a wonderful Sumi ink, already ground down for you. Traditionally, the ink is made from soot, from the candles that they use to keep vigil, to uh, make offerings on the altars, and just to keep light, and a bit of fat. So basically, you can make ink from, from candles. Now, I wouldn't recommend it. That's a lot of work, when you can just buy something already created. But perhaps that might be part of your practice. Perhaps you might want to concentrate deeply on where your ink comes from. You might become particular. You may uh, get a particular type of wood and make your own ash in a, uh, uh, in a proper um, barbecue pit and then create your own ink. Or you can do as I do and find a store that you enjoy. Purchase the ink quality. So you pour your ink into the ink stone. Now this is where you have to make choices. It's important to make choices. And you, the choices, once you have committed to them, cannot change. But you can change them afterwards. So it is not too dramatic. It is not too intense. It is not too painful. Choose your brush. Decide how dark you want your ink to be. And you take little by little, just a touch of water and decide the consistency of your ink. And focus very carefully on what you would like to have seen on your brush. You take great care to do so. You focus all of your energy. Everything about this moment is only to achieve this one circle. But right now, 
in this particular present. The only thing that matters is loading up the ink on my brush carefully, very, very consciously, paying attention. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. That is not why we pay attention. We pay attention so that we are aware that we are living in this very moment. This is how we stay alive. This is how we stay in the now. We focus our attention. It's very difficult right now for many people to concentrate. This may seem very laborious. It doesn't have to be. And when you are ready, you straighten your spine, you perfect the way you are sitting, perfect your posture, you perfect the posture of your, of your, uh, Pen. And when you are ready, you take the moment and commit it to the paper. When you are using different types of paper, especially the lighter kinds, whether it's a news print or a rice paper, it is handy to have paperweights. These are traditional, either Chinese or Japanese paperweights, depending on where you, you get them from. These particular are Japanese. And they hold your paper down to make sure that the character of your moment is not disturbed by your energy. And when you are ready, and you create your moment. You allow it to dry. You can choose to look at it and enjoy its quality, or you can move on to the next moment and see how that is for you. The insole is often seen to be in correlation to the cross in Christian culture for, for Zen Buddhism because of its, um, its utility, its simplicity, its totality, because it is so simple that a child can use it. It contains everything in the whole universe. So one can be very serious about it. One can be very concerned about it. Or one can enjoy your moment. We don't have to be so serious. We don't have to be so serious. Now, for those of you who, act, who have uh, ink and pen or ink and brush, let's take a moment for you to go through it. Now, this is before the actual workshop, but I have the feeling that many of you are excited. So, let us do this together. Your paper. If you have paper weights or not, it's fine either way. Your choice of ink. And sometimes you may want to, you may want to change your brush. You might ink your brush and decide, I want to do something a little smaller. You might feel different. And that will give you a different quality of line as well. The different material of your brush will give you a different quality of line. The different absorption of your paper 
So every single version of the insult that you do will be different. You are never the same. Neither is your insult. And by the change of material, you have something materially different. So I believe we might be halfway through the teaching part. So I'm thinking that we can take a few moments. If you have a um, pencil and pencil or a brush, you may want to rinse them out a bit. Um, and let's take a moment, have a bit of water, um, walk about, and, and then we'll come back. It's the same thing that we do in Zen practice. We practice for a half hour. We take a, a moment where either we do walking Zazen, and then we sit for another half hour. Now in that 10 minutes, you, if you have to drink water or if you need to take a walk, this is the moment to do so. Or if you've decided you've had, had enough of me, this is the moment to escape. So let us take a five minute break. Yeah, what's up? What's up to nothing? Watching TV? Watching TV?
Welcome back. Before we go further and pick up our brush again, let us experience the tradition that the Enso comes from. Let us take a moment and let us experience Zen. The stillness that you think will happen in meditation or, uh, or Zazen comes only after years and years of practice. And then again, perhaps not. It is okay not to be still. It is okay not to have a quiet mind. I'm quite sure the Buddha had thoughts. The point is not to be attached to it. You know, we have to figure out how to live here because the, the suffering as it were, or maybe just the satisfaction is here. So let us employ the breathing and the attitude of mind that we would employ in Zazen before we begin working with the insult. We call the, the ideal attitude of mind ishirio. It sounds exciting, sounds exotic. It is not. It is a way of saying thinking without thoughts, thinking beyond yourself, thinking with your whole body, plugging into the cosmic consciousness. That is how our past abbot, uh, Robert Livingston used to like to say it. The cosmic consciousness or source if you like, as you wish. Zen does not require you to believe anything. Zen does not require you not to. It is up to you because there's a way of life. Now, let us prepare ourselves before we begin our insult. Sit as straight as you can. But listen to your body. Don't, 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 don't hurt yourself. Do what you can. This is a practice. The insult is a practice of understanding where you are right now. It is not about striving. No goal, no gain. That is another term that, that we use. The, actual, the Japanese word is moshutoko. No goal, no gain. You do things because you can. Because, because then, as they say, is good for nothing. No thing, which is what the enso symbolizes. The no thingness, which is quite different than nothing. No separation, no thingness. So let us sit as straight as we can. You don't have to close your eyes. Just look down. Look down ahead of you, like about a foot and a half ahead of you. If you're inclined, put your hands on your lap. Or you can put them on the table for you. We're going to focus our energy, our attention, our concentration in order to properly align ourselves with the desire that we have to create this moment. Why do we do it? Because we can, it is a luxury. So breathe in, breathe out naturally. Don't force your breath. But if you can, as you breathe in, just allow your breath to go out. Go down if you can. Just press your breath down, but not too difficult. Don't force anything. Just do what you can. Slowly and considerately. This is, this is what can be called mindfulness in our tradition the care, the attention, the focus that is given to a particular action. So let us enjoy these, these moments. We'll take just a few. Don't 
Do not run from your mind or your body. Do not run from your now. Allow yourself to be here, just here. Don't think about your phone. Don't think about the animals. Don't think about your children or your parents. Don't think about anything else but this moment. The luxury of being right here, right now. Allow yourself to be present all the way to the tips of your fingers. Try to press your head against the sky as, if you, if, as your feet press the earth, if you are sitting in a chair, or your knees, if you are sitting on a cushion, press the earth. Try ever so slightly to touch the sky with your head. And just sit there in that experience.
Now, slowly bring your awareness back. Do not rush, but do not tarry either. Bring your awareness back to this moment. That was five minutes. For some, it may have felt like an eternity. For some, it may have felt like a week. It will change for you depending on how many times you do it. It's a wonderful way to start a day or to start an ENSO practice of your own. Should you begin to do an ENSO practice, whether it be weekly or daily, give yourself a ritual. Give yourself a containment space. The same the, as the ENSO contain, is a container. We say the ritual is empty of Zazen because you bring whatever it is that you are to it, the same way that you bring yourself to the dojo. Bring yourself to your paper when you're doing the insult. If you're a writer or an artist, it's a wonderful way to, uh, to uh, shake yourself out of a, a funk or a, a writer's block. You know, in the middle of, if you're writing and you have, and you have a moment, just stop, stop what you're doing. Start drawing some insults. It seems so simple, but you can find a lifetime of development and a deepening of your spirit by practicing so, join the insult. Now, take, take those five minutes if you like, or not. Prepare yourself some tea if you like, or some incense. I prefer sandalwood. But it is up to you. Give yourself a space that you dedicate only to you. How many moments of the day do you devote only to yourself? Right. Very few do. And because, and that's good. It's okay to to be concerned for others. It, it is a wonderful way to keep society going, but you must fill your own cup before you can fill someone else's. Spend time on yourself. It's a luxury. The, the, uh, the Zen master who taught um, Robert Livingston's teacher, Deshimaru, his teacher, Koda Sawaki said, Zen is a luxury, it's good for nothing, but it's good for nothing and no thing. It allows you to spend just a few moments of the day completely and totally dedicated to yourself. So you can do the and so as many times a day as you like or as often as you like. Do it once a day for a week and see how it changes. See how you change. See how you change the, in the way you feel about it. So, traditionally black ink is used, but often you'll see a little bit of red. So if you want to change your experience touch, Feel free to change your colors as well. But there's something so very sobering and, and, um, since, and sincere, maybe even honest about the black line on, on the white paper. you will find that focus is very important for many things. It is good to practice such concentration. Now, even though it seems like stillness, it's very active. You're very present in your body, in your energy, in this moment. But if you do this enough, 
If you concentrate enough, you will find that what looks like tranquility or stillness will develop. But in fact, it's very, very active. So you concentrate. You prepare your paper. You prepare yourself. Raise your breastbone. Make sure that you can breathe comfortably. Make sure that you are sitting as straight as you can so that you can hold your pen. Your, your brush as straight as you can. And if you want to pick a different color, do so. Just because it's traditional doesn't mean you can't have a bit of fun. But observe the form and fill that empty form. When you are ready, still yourself. Prepare yourself and drop your brush. You may feel very different about a different color. It feel different. It can give you a different textual quality. Because it is so simple the tiniest change will absolutely change everything. Now this is known as a haka brush. You can use these as well if you want a larger experience for your insole. Try out different types. I like to, but I like to call this my elder wand, but it's just a very large brush. The way the Enso looks with this brush is very different. The way it feels, you know, you'll you'll notice that sometimes you may pull to the right or the left. It may tell you something different. The information that you get from yourself in these moments is very valuable. It seems very, very inconsequential, but you can learn a lot about yourself by looking at your insults, seeing why your mind is wandering, why this brush won't work for you today. Discomfort. Uh, disturbance, that, that little bit of, of anxiety that we experience, these are messages from ourselves. And it is in this stillness, this, these moments where we slow down and allow our minds to connect with our bodies and we move automatically, naturally, unconsciously, that we give ourselves time to see and feel these experiences and we get more information about ourselves in these moments. I find that I'm excited. I want to use a bigger brush. Let's see what happens. And maybe, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put only water on, on one side of the brush and maybe I'll put ink on the other. Let's see what happens. But when we have prepared our brush, we do the same thing as we did before straight up and down. We prepare our spine, head presses the sky. We look down, we are aware, we are ready. Breathe in. And when we are ready, you drop the brush. Let's see what happens. The experience changes. This one seems to appear to have a shadow. This one appears to be three-dimensional. You do not know what is hiding within you until you have an opportunity 
of something simple to see how things change from moment to moment, day to day, and understand how rich this experience could be, or it could just be just drawing circles, whatever you feel. It doesn't have to be that serious, but it can be. Now, let's do some more. Now, I'm gonna show you this one because I'm particularly interested in this one. This is a new look. And it's simply one brush with ink on one side, water on the other, and the combination in between. Such a tiny change, such a tiny adjustment changes everything. We must remember that in our lives as well. A tiny adjustment will change everything about the moment. Now let's put in a bit more ink. Let's see what happens. It's important to remember the spontaneity that we have the ability to change these moments as we like to create what it, what it is that we wish to see. And there's plenty of time even between the seconds to change your experience. Let's go back to the bigger brush. I'm very cautious about not dropping ink. I find that as part of my personal practice. I like to be able to paint without a drop cloth, without something underneath. Perhaps it's a bit of arrogance. Either way, it is where it is right now. You drop the brush and in one stroke, you create an experience. Now it's not a, important to try to make it look like it did the last time. That's not important. What's important is what's happening. It's not important to have a perfect circle, although a perfect circle is said to represent the source, to represent perfection. But this world is not perfect. So, and we are not required to be. So make your choices, drop your pit brush and go. Now, when you use larger brushes and larger paper, you use more of your body, you get more involved. It becomes a bigger experience. Preferable? Not necessarily. Des more desirable? Not necessarily. No need to judge it. See what works for you. And if it doesn't work for you the next time, that's fine too. Load the ink upon your brush. Prepare your brush as you prepare yourself. I like to roll the, the edge because I like a pointed edge on my brush to draw my insole with, but you may not like that. And that's perfect too. And what happens every moment is the perfection of that moment. Prepare yourself, pull your pencils straight up and down, just like your, like your spine. I see you. These are looking very good. 
Very good. I see some very wonderful energy there. Very concentrated. Yes, keep it up. Let us do another. Breathe in deeply. Drop your brush and create. You will find that depending on what you're thinking, what you're saying, what's happening, the answer might change. What you might find interesting, and I've done this, is to, as you do your daily ensos, if they look a little different, write down what was occurring at the time so that you can see how certain experiences change the way you express your energy, the way you express your movement. This information that you get about yourself is invaluable. Because remember, this is a luxury. Time where you do not focus on anyone else or anything else. You do not worry about your job or who you owe or anything of that nature. You focus only in the moment, the here, the now. Be here and now and allow yourself to experience this. The way that we are applying Zen principles to draw, drawing the circle, to doing different types of calligraphy, you can apply that to anything in your life. We say there is nothing outside of Zen. It is one thing. Work practice, difficulties, any type of difficulties or challenges that come across, including if, if your brush decides to break, if you lose bristles, it's perfect. That's exactly what this moment is supposed to do. Let's do another one. There's your brush, prepare, your, prepare yourself, breathe in. Drop your brush and go. You can take these principles to larger options as well. I like to in, uh, encompass this in, in my acrylic work because I'm, uh, I'm also an acrylic artist. So I'll do very large insoles with uh, very large brushes and in different mediums. It is applicable. You can take it into your current life. And just as it had its implications in the past, it can be useful for you in the future. Assume that there'll be another now. But we're not concerned about that. Only this one. This now. Rose, I'm, I, I'm jumping on my role as timekeeper and uh, noticing that it's about 7.04 and I'm wondering if this is a good opportunity for us to allow for some Q&A if folks have questions uh, about anything we've talked about tonight or questions for Rose. There was, a, a, as folks are gathering their thoughts or thinking about potential questions, there was one that came up in the chat um, from uh, Sean that was curious about Buddhism and whether it was a religion or a philosophy. Is, is that uh, something you, you can speak about, Rose? I can, and the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, now, Zen in particular is a offshoot of Buddhism. So it's a derivative, it's, it's, one, it's one type. The same way that uh, Christian traditions have different forms. So there's Catholicism, there's uh, Baptist, there's uh, Church of Christ, Lutheran. You have all those different types of denominations and um, strains and 
sects within Buddhism as well. So some are very religious, some aren't. This tradition here uh, of the New Orleans Zen Temple, uh, we are a Soto Zen tradition. We say that we are of the uh, Koto Sawaki Deshi Maru lineage. Our, um, the man who started the temple, Robert Livingston, who uh, passed this year, he's a abbot, uh, a past abbot. He uh, learned to practice in Paris in the 60s. And uh, his teacher, Deshi Maru, had gone to Paris in order to bring this particular strand of Zen to the United States. Now, the other types of Zen got here faster because they came across the water. So you have a lot of Zen concentrated in, in uh, California, um, Kaplow in New York, but you know, Deshimaru was in Europe. So you won't find a lot of this particular lineage in America. We were the first. And those who are in the United States are all offshoots of this particular temple. Now, we are more, more of a reformist um, in, in a way that many of the, uh, the temples in, at the time were very um, ceremonious, we were stripped down. So we focus on the practice. So we, more, ph more philosophical, more, more practical, not so religious, but it can be. Thank you so much, Rose. Um, I noticed that Anne has her hand raised. Um, Anne, would you like to ask a question? I do have a question. Um, sometimes I seem to go to the right and sometimes I go to the left. Yes. Uh, is there something that is more traditional or indicative or anything? Well, uh, that's a good question. You could do it either way. But because, uh, because of the way the Japanese writing is different than we write, they do the opposite. So we drop the brush and it's a, a clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on how you actually write. Whatever feels good to you. Thank you, Rose. Good question, Anne. Um, I, I'm reading a follow-up comment and question from um, Sean, uh, and he says that you know he's he's read some Zen books. Um, he didn't entirely understand it. And then he spoke to a friend who said, nobody understands Zen. I'm putting that in quotes. And he's wondering if you can comment on that. Sure, because, because Zen is like Tao, right? So Taoism is an indigenous uh, spiritual tradition from China. Zen originated in, uh, in India uh, with the, the name Dhyana, which translates to meditation. As, as it became, uh, went across Europe, uh, Asia to China, it became Chan. These are just translations, right? So what the thing that you are talking about cannot truly be named. You can call it Zen, but that's not what it is. But it's a name that'll do. It's the same way as point the, the story about pointing to the moon. You can point to the moon but the finger is not the moon. So Zen that you can talk about, Zen that can be named, Zen that can be described is not Zen. If you hear someone saying that, oh my God, you're so Zen, you're not. Nobody knows what that is. All we can do is what we can do. It's a way. Thank you, Rose. Um, I noticed that Rachel has her hand raised as well. Rachel, would you like to ask a question? Sure. Um, I was wondering if the temple is available to visit or uh, what are the protocols for COVID? Absolutely. Uh, the New Orleans Zen Temple, we're at a new location, 3600 Napoleon oh. Avenue. And we are taking our in-person by appointment and, uh, and you can actually sign up on the website. Uh, uh, we should have that shown. It's a uh, New Orleans Zen Temple uh, dot, uh, dot org. 
We'll go Thank ahead you. and put, we'll put that into the chat. Connor, who's my colleague. Connor, I'm going to ask you to put that uh, website into the chat so everyone can see it. And you could also email us at nozentemple, N-O-Z-E-N-T-E-M-P-L-E at gmail.com. And we can direct you either, direct, either way. So we are having introductions consistently um, in smaller groups and uh, because we are COVID safe. Thank you, everyone. So it's 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 seven ten. Um, I just want to take a, a a quick few minutes to close out the conversation um, and say thank you <laughs> to all of those who are on this um, call or on this Zoom session, I should say. Um, and thank you to uh, Rose Bratcher. I found it incredibly informative and, and there's so many positive comments here in the chat. Thank you everyone who is giving their positive thoughts and feedback. Um, please come visit us at, at NOMA in person if you are able to do so. Uh, the exhibition, Buddha and Shiva, Lotus and Dragon is I'm biased, but incredibly spectacular. And, uh, you know, I would love for as many people to see it as possible. You can access information about the exhibition at www.noma.org, as well as find information about all of our programs coming up in the virtual realm. And I would be thrilled to see as many of you uh, in our future programs participating as possible. So thank you all so much. Uh, and Rose, are there any last words you want to say or anything to the group? I am just so excited that I could be of benefit and really grateful for your attention and your time. Thank you for enjoying. And hopefully, um, you know, if, if we can be a service, let us. But in, go see the exhibit. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.